Good eye. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, haven't been on Facebook in so long now. All of a sudden, I'm all over Facebook, man. Y'all gonna get sick of me again. <laughs> anyway, like uh, you probably saw, I got that piece of lumbar out of my hand. Everything's uh, progressing good. You know, still a little sore and whatnot, but definitely um, progressing. You know, for the better, and we'll soon be healed up, and it'll all be a memory. Um, but you know, I, I there are two things, two things, subjects in life that I always really, really enjoyed, and really was always keen on discussing and or commenting on and or interested in as far as finding out as much as possible, you know, as I could as to what was going on, and that is, of course, politics and religion. Actually, the two are uh, indistinguishable and in some areas of life, politics and religion actually merge or one uh, because your religious beliefs will dictate your political persuasions or maybe even vice versa. Hopefully the former rather than the latter because we'd like to have God to have first priority and um, you know, your religion convince you of your politics. Lately, I've become, once again in life, more, much more interested in uh, the religious. Well, I, I shouldn't say the religious because I don't do religion, but the spiritual. And actually a lot less interested in the political, only in the sense that I, I, I just like to have fun. And... Um, you know, posting things uh, um, as far as like with Trump and all. I mean, I, I do hope Trump wins. I, you know, um, that's just from a common sense point of view. You know, it has nothing to do with my religious uh, point of view. You know, everybody could claim they believe in God and, and, and so forth. And what, you know, that, that's just words. So that doesn't mean it, it's the fact that the economy in the United States and as a result, the Bahamas and the rest of the world was much more stable. There was much less talk of war and all these sort of things. That's so just common sense. But anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. What I want to get, you know, really um, talk about is, you know, uh, uh, my spiritual conviction. And, you know, why are we here? Um, you know, we two things I want to uh, touch on today, and I'll try to be as, as brief as possible. Why are we here? What was the purpose? What is the purpose in us being here? And, you know, what is the, what is really the outcome, the eventual outcome? Uh, you know, because obviously um, we as human beings and the animal and everything eventually dies. And, and uh, as we observe in nature and, and so forth, the cycle, you know, comes and, and then restarts. And then life restarts. That's cycle in nature. Why are we here? To, to my best understanding of the scriptures and, you know, um, considering all of them, considering all of it, you know, not just a verse, a chapter, or even a book in the Bible, but to consider the whole thing. Why are we? We're here because God, um, that is the most high, capital G God, and not small g God, but God, the creator, is a creator God, a creative God, and a creator God. And the word says that it pleased him that he had created us. He wanted, you know, I get the feeling, he wanted to make something beautiful and pleasing to himself, and we were the result. Humanity was the result. Mankind was the result. You know, so that is why we are here, that, you know, that, that is, you know, the, the most reasonable conclusion that I could come to, considering all that I know about Scripture, about 
God and all of that is that it pleased him to create us and he wanted to create something that you know he, he loved and when he created man we, we have to realize something that when he created man and then put man you know Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden it was not God's intention for man to die it was not God's intention for man to suffer, to to uh, have to work hard, you know, for his for his uh, um, sustenance and and so forth. God created perfection, and Adam and Eve were created perfectly, put into a perfect environment, and so forth. And then, of course, the question comes up: Well, why did he allow? Didn't he create? Uh, Lucifer, the devil, and so forth. Yes, he did. But he did not create man with the intention of that, <coughs> excuse me, of that entering in. You say, well, why? Couldn't he stop it? Couldn't he have stopped Yes, he could have. Why didn't he? Well, first of all, we have to understand that man, we, and the angels, and the angels, were created or created with a free will. You know, it always it always bothered me really um, that how could it have entered into the heart of Lucifer to um, you know that pride and whatnot. Where did that come from? How could that enter into his heart? I can't really answer that conclusively. You know where that came from, but. The only thing really, and the only thing that anybody, if they're being honest with you, can tell you as to, you know, as a way to explain that is that the angels and us were created with a free will. So you, we have the, the, the free will, um, personal authority to decide for ourselves our religious road in life. Or, you know, all, well, not only religious, but our road in general in life. We either accept, you know, uh, what he has to offer and, and, and do it his way, or we try to do it our way. And we know how that always ends up. So that's really the only thing we can say is that Lucifer was created with free will. Uh, in that free will, he decided that he wanted to be God, and uh, as a result, he was cast out and whatnot. And then, of course, you know, anybody having been... Um, around something or somebody such as God, all powerful and all knowing and all, you know, everything, and to have that removed or be removed from that, I imagine it can make you pretty angry. Um, so it's been a, it's been a, a, a war ever since that uh, the devil is just simply trying to destroy everything that God has created because he's angry and and he doesn't want to see anything that God has created be successful it is his I hate to say job because nobody gave him the job he, he took it upon himself but it, it, it is his mission that is what he is he is destruction Deception, you know, and on corruption and on. That's where all of the corruption and 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 you know and and sin and whatnot in our hearts comes from. That evil influence. So he decided he wanted to be that. Of course, God said, well, "We can't have that." You know, I am God. Uh, you are not God. I created you. Uh, so you and your band of merry men will be banished. And he chucked them out. So now people say, out of heaven. Well, why is it right that if I don't believe and whatnot, that I'm going to hell and, and punishing hell forever? Well, I, I, like I shared yesterday, I personally don't believe anybody's going to hell to burn a new hell fire forever. I'm sorry, I just don't get that vibe from the scripture. Um, like I said, there will be um, uh, uh, punishment and accountability and, and, and so forth, but nobody's going to burn in hell forever. Not everybody's going to heaven either. 
you know, I, I think, you know, the real wicked or those that reject Christ and whatnot will just, um, you know, the real, real wicked and whatnot, I don't know. But, you know, the average person who, who just just rejects Christ and says, you know, well, I, I don't believe it. I don't want to have it. You know, they might be just basically a good per person. I think that you, you'll you just come to naught. Your soul, you will, you know, just how God created you. He took you up and created you out of nothing. He, he, like the scripture says, the fear not those that can destroy the um, body, meaning man and the devil, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. So this is what hell is. You'll go there to be judged and whatnot, and then you'll just be, you know, just, just destroy Whatever you are, whatever your essence, you know, your soul or whatever, just be destroyed. Whereas if you go, um, if you believe on Christ, um, the redemptive power of, of the blood of Jesus Christ, and you believe that really and truly in your heart and whatnot, that you will go on to eternal life in Christ Jesus and, you know, and with God and whatever he holds and has in store for the future. And, you know, we, we, we read about... Um, the new heavens and new earth eventually after the tribulation and all this and what and we, we you know and those of us that believe uh we believe that and, and we see that and we read it and we you know we say you know that, that but we really we really have no idea <laughs> it, we, we can't comprehend the glory that is to come i think it was paul the apostle paul i, I think that wrote and said that he imagines that the suffering and, and whatnot, uh, all of the negative, the negativity and the, the things we must suffer and go through in this life cannot compare, cannot compare to the glory that is to come. You know, kind of like, a, I think there's an, an analogy made in the Bible that a woman uh, in labor, you know, is in pain and anguish and so forth and uh, angry even you know it's a terrible ordeal for some women and whatnot but when that child is born that that pain and whatnot is soon forgotten because of the joy that that new life brings you know so that's what it's all about that's what it's all about you say well it's basically an experiment y yeah to you, you know you you could actually say that in a sense it is but he didn't just put you here and left, uh, put you here and left you and said, you know, root hog or die, do the best you could, you on your own. That ain't, that is not the case whatsoever. You know, God didn't put us here to do the best we could and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'm done with it, you know, here, I, I created you here, boom, do the best you could, you on your own, uh, I, I guess we'll see you sometime. <laughs> it ain't like that at all. You know, and it looks like in this world today that God, God has lost control. <laughs> Well, actually, you see, this is this is where knowing the word and, and, and whatnot, where it differs. If you know the word, you study the word and whatnot, these things that are happening and going on, you know, these are confirmation of our belief and cause for us to rejoice in that, to take heart in that our redemption is nigh. Even closer and closer all the time. So as believers, we take heart. We're not, we're not, well, of course we don't want to see people suffer. Of course we don't want to see war. Of course we don't want to see hunger and, and all of this. But we were told beforehand that these things were going to come to pass. And the reason these things come to pass is because of the absolute uh, uh, corruption of the hearts of, of man, mankind. And that whether you believe it or not, some people, I, I say men, but people, have act, just as some people believe on Christ and follow God and seek to do God's will and pray and believe in God and, 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 and worship and whatnot, there are people worshiping and have given over their hearts and, and, and minds to Satan. Some of them realize what they're in because, you know, they, they are in league with Satan. Some of them don't. Um, you know, they, they just haven't realized that they are under the influence of, of powers greater than them and things, you know, that they, they cannot possibly understand. Not in this life. Anyway, I, I, think, that's how it, I think that's how things are. Um, that's my personal belief. Uh, I'm not trying to push it on anybody. I'm just sharing my personal views and whatnot on a subject that I find most 
dear and near to my heart these days. I guess maybe because I'm getting older, I'm becoming more aware of my mortality and so forth and so on. But the signs I see around me you know, encourage me more and more all the time because the, the Bible is being fulfilled, prophecy is being fulfilled right before my very eyes. I would be a fool to deny it. Now, next thing, real quick. Accept the Lord as your personal Savior and be saved. Well, in, 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 in actuality, yes. It's a personal relationship between you and God because nobody can make, like I said yesterday, can make amends for your sin and you can't make amends for anybody else's sin. You can't take, uh, uh, you know, uh, forgive. You could be responsible for your own actions and everybody else will. So it's all a personal relationship with God. Yes, the church is the universal body of believers actual real true believers in the risen Christ uh, you know whatever denomination organization name mean absolutely nothing religion means absolutely nothing how do you know you're in a religion if it's a lot of ritual concern um, involved in it if you got to do certain things and and say certain things and and other you know certain prayers at a certain time all that you know that is religion a relationship is God, with God is knowing God and knowing in your heart that God is real and believing in the risen Christ and knowing in your heart that you are sealed, you know, for, for eternity with him. That when you die, you, have not, you, you don't have to fear death because that is just basically, it, it is just absolutely the transition from this life into the next. And we have to go that route because sin, sin entered in in the very beginning. It was not, like I said, it was not God's intention from the beginning. But because sin did enter in, then, like the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. So we have to go through this process of death. You know, people have been dying since we were, since we were created almost. You know, nothing new. Not unique. You're not unique in, you know, your, your suffering or, 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 or anything. You know, every, everybody got to go that road. Uh, <clears throat> some people suffer more than others. Some people who are Christians, believers, suffer more. And anyone. Why? Why do the, you know, do good people suffer? Well, you know, who's good? Who's good? You know, in our, in our uh, estimation and whatnot, who, who's good? We can't justify anybody. You got to realize God's, God, <laughs> God's standard. Now, nah, listen, we don't have any idea. You know, you think your parents are strict and had strict standards, and you've been in the military or anything like that, and, you know, there's certain standards that they, they adhere to, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. But, once we enter into that, we will be a part of that, so it won't be like we're trying to keep up with uh, strict parents and whatnot. We will be overjoyed to be in His presence. But, um, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you're, well, actually, there's a little more going on. That sounds a little simple, a little too simple in this day and time because things have become so convoluted and, and, and whatnot, especially with, within the church. And there's so much skullduggery going on inside the church and whatnot these days. You, you really got to be careful. You really got to know what, you, what you're dealing with. You really got to know the word for yourself. That's why Paul says to study to show thyself approved, you know, so that you, you, you know. I, I, I'm not, you know, I can not only tell you that I believe, a certain thing, but I could tell you why I believe it. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, yes. Well, what it means is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It means to believe that the man Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, one of the Jewish, Yeshua Hamashiach, did walk this earth. Now, that is an irrefutable, fa irrefutable fact, even from secular history. Forget the Bible just for a second. According to secular history, a man calling himself Jesus Christ walked this earth. That is irrefutable. I mean, to say that he, he wasn't real, to say that he didn't exist, you'd be stupid. You'd be going against um, 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 secular human uh, discovered and recorded history. 
Not God's record. You'd be going against man's record. The man existed. He walked among men and whatnot, and he created quite, quite a stir. Quite a stir among his own people. <laughs> And among, and among a lot of other people, you know, it, it, I, I have to laugh because I, <clears throat> I think of the religious establishment today, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and I'm talking about, <clears throat> quote unquote, religious, um, Christian esta religious establishment and whatnot, and I think to myself, these people, you know, if, if Christ was to come back on the scene today, these, these people probably do the same thing to him, because, <laughs> you know, question my, I'm a big monk. I'm a, I'm a pastor, and I'm got, I'm got 500 people under me, and it comes to my church, and, and we go through $100,000 a week, and tithe my, who you is, to come here to tell me anything, <laughs> I gotta laugh, man, because man is just so full of crap, and, and, and so, and so corrupt, and so, you know, you gotta laugh at him. The Bible says that, you, you know, we, we, God can look at them and laugh at them because he gave you what you need. But no, no, you want to do it your way. You can still do it your way. He can laugh at you at the end of it all. It's to be too late. It's going to be a sad, very, very sad situation. But guess what? Those of us who are actually really prepared in here, in here and in here, it ain't going to be no sad thing and we ain't going to be worrying about it and whatnot because we will have passed from this finite, limited, uh, miserable physical existence into glory. And like I said, it's incomprehensible. You, you can't. You can't. You can believe it, and I hope you do believe it, but you can't really comprehend what, what, will, what will take place. You can't. But anyway, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ means that you do believe that the man Jesus Christ was exactly who he said he was. You believe that in your heart. He did die um, uh, according to what the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the ancient writings um, prophesied before we had the New Testament. They prophesied it. Uh, those scriptures uh, prophesied the coming of this Messiah and so forth. And um, he did come. He did die for the reason that the, 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 the old scripture said he was coming to die. And he did rise again, supernaturally, from the dead. And that he ascended into heaven and sits on the Father's right hand. And he is our intercessor. He is our high priest. That we can come boldly to the throne, the Bible says. Now, you get that. You can come boldly. To the throne that where you could not before under the old covenant you had of course the priest made sacrifice and so forth and that's how the atonement was made for sins and it was ritual it was religion and um but that's how people were justified back in under the old law um in uh, the law under the old covenant by the law <clears throat> today we are justified by grace of faith and faith of course should lead to works Works is absolutely nothing without faith, and faith, if it don't have any works, is dead. <laughs> you understand that? You know, if you claim to be so and so and so, there should be some evidence in your life. You know, this could say anything. I could tell you anything. I could say anything. I could, man, I could talk the sweetest words and whatnot and tell you all kind of things, who I is and what I done do and, and so forth and how much sophisticate I get on the wall and things like that. I could tell you anything. I mean, unless you know for sure. Otherwise, I'm not. How you going to know? You know? And sweet talkers, man, plenty of us been the victims of sweet talkers. But that's what it means. You know, receive uh, Christ as your personal Savior. It sounds a little trivial, but that is exactly what's happening. But it's, it's a spiritual experience. Now, you might not have a vision. You might not speak in tongues. You might, you might not. It's just the, the, you'll, you'll gain the uh, confidence in your mind that you're sealed. And that's what that's all about. And be baptized. Baptism is not the act, the physical act of baptism has no regenerational power. If you just go out and say, well, I'm going to become a Christian, I'm going to get baptized, 
but there's no conversion, nothing went on in here and in here and whatnot, and, you know, spiritually between you and God. You know, you humble yourself before God, you haven't his forgiveness or anything like that and whatnot, then uh, baptism's not going to get you to heaven. Um, I do believe that once you make a confession and whatnot, you should be baptized. As soon as possible, too, <clears throat> by the way. <clears throat> I came up as a Baptist. I was converted under the, uh, kind of like the Southern Baptist um, denomination. I, I don't adhere to any denomination now. But I came up under the Baptist, the old Southern Baptist and whatnot. And, of course, you know, we used to make um, make uh, plans to <clears throat> have a baptism and, and, you know, and various other um, uh, denominations uh, do the same thing. Some of the denominations do the same thing. I, I kind of like have a problem with that now. I think if you, once you make a confession and you believe, well, you should be baptized um, immediately if possible. You know? Now, if you're not baptized, you know, if you, you, you make a confession and whatnot and you fix and go down to the seaside to go get baptized and you get run over by a car, will you go to heaven? Yes. Yeah, you should be baptized. But if things beyond your control... Um, prevent you from doing that? Yes. Thief on the cross. He didn't get baptized. But baptism is, 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 is very important because Christ was baptized by a man, John. So it's something, it's important. Anyway, I hope I make sense to somebody somewhere, and um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm going to try to find me something to eat. Bless up.